Hello everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. In this video, we're gonna look at two ways you can get more power out of your power supply. And those two ways are using your power regulator circuits in series and in parallel. So how do you do this in the circuit diagram? And then how do you do this on a PCB? That's what we're gonna take a look at in this video. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along. So we're going to be looking at how to connect power supplies in series and in parallel. And when you connect power supplies in series and in parallel, they give two different effects. So let's just suppose for a moment that I have two power supplies, A, and I have power supply B. If I basically connect them in series, like you might connect a battery, you would basically have a situation where the output voltage is equal to the sum of VA plus VB. So this comes from Kirchhoff's voltage law. If I put voltage sources in series, they add together. Then if I connect a load across these terminals, the current that is delivered to that load, I sub L, is going to be equal to the current delivered from A, which is also equal to the current delivered from B. So if one of these two supplies limits current to some particular value, it's gonna limit all the other currents in this loop. Next, let's take a look at parallel operation. So in parallel operation, we basically have the positive terminals of our supply connected together, and then we have the negative terminals of our supply connected together. So let's just suppose I have two supplies, A and B. Here, A, I have my plus terminal and my plus terminal connected to B, and then this goes to B out. Here, I have this going to a ground net, and then here I have this also going to a ground net. So we have the terminals on the negative side connected together essentially to a plane in this configuration. Then if we measure with respect to this terminal over here, also connected to ground, we would then see that V out is going to be equal to VA and should also be equal to VB. So this is very important because if we connect these two in parallel, we should have the same output voltage from each supply. Now, what about the current? Well, supply A sources a current I sub A, and supply B sources a current I sub B. And they're both flowing into this node, so from Kirchhoff's current law, the total current, IT, is going to be equal to IA plus IB. So the currents just add up in this configuration. So let's look at what happens now in terms of the power output. And we have different instances here in series and in parallel. Now remember, the entire point of doing all of this is to increase the power output by increasing the total voltage or the total current. Generally, you wanna hit some voltage target, but then you also have to deliver enough current so that you reach your power level that you desire at your load. So in the series case, we have that the total power is just equal to the sum of our supplies, VA plus VB, multiplied by the current reaching the load. In the parallel case, we had the opposite. We had some voltage output, which was equal to our A and our B, and that was being multiplied by the current supplied by A plus the current supplied by B. These are the power outputs that we can expect to achieve. Now, this is in a theoretically perfect case where we don't create any additional losses or inefficiencies due to the connections in series and in parallel. So in a real case, you may not get full summation of the current or full summation of the voltage. There could actually be some drops along the way. And if you look in a data sheet for a regulator that is specifically designed to be paralleled, you may actually see that they don't give you a total current being the sum. The total current could be something more like, uh, let's say 80% multiplied by this sum, IA plus IB. So keep that in mind. You don't always get perfect summation. However, if the power output that you're targeting is going to be much higher than the maximum value that you need at your load, you're gonna be able to ensure that you've got enough headroom to account for this 80% or 90% or whatever number it ends up being for your particular regulators. Now, in the parallel case, we had that V out equals VA, which is also equal to VB. 
So how do we make sure that we always have this condition? Well, the easiest way to do this is to just literally replicate your VA circuit over to your VB circuit. And if you do that, you should, within reasonable tolerances, ensure that these two voltages are the same. And this will ensure that your V out value has this matching condition all the way across for all of your regulators that you put in parallel. So that's very important because if we have one of our regulators biased higher than the other regulator, we could drive that regulator into reverse bias and we could damage that regulator, especially if you then look at the data sheet, you'll see that some of those reverse input conditions can be very low, as low as just a few hundred millivolts. And so that's enough to damage the regulator when you drive it into reverse bias in a parallel configuration like this. So you want to avoid that. The other thing here is that in the parallel case, remember, we're using regulator circuits. So there's some input voltage here. We'll call it V sub I. So in this V sub I case for series and in parallel, do we have to have the same input voltage? Well, not necessarily. In our parallel case, we could have different input voltages, but as long as we have the same output voltages, then we can be reasonably sure that we're going to have this condition here matched. However, I would submit that the easiest way to do this with power regulators is to ensure that they both have the same input voltage. Now, what about the series case? Well, in the series case, we had the case where IA is equal to IB, which is required by Kirchhoff's law. So in Kirchhoff's current law, whichever of these currents is smaller, it's going to limit the current in the other regulator. Now, if we have two different inputs going into our VA and our VB, we can have that and we can get different VA and VB values because they just add together. So these VA and VB can be any value. However, if we have different inputs into our two regulators, we could then have a case where one of these inputs limits the current to be too low and we don't get out the maximum amount of current that we want to then reach our load. So consider how you're doing this with regulators. I think the easiest way to ensure that you get the maximum power out of a series and parallel configuration is to use the same input supply voltage, V sub I, for all of the regulators in these arrangements. Now the next thing that I want to look at for the series configuration is regulation and isolation. So typically when we do this, we want to get to very high power outputs, and that typically means we have to use a switching regulator. However, with a switching regulator, you need to have feedback in order to ensure regulation at your target voltage. And you then may have an issue here with regulation, depending on how you implement that feedback. You could also have an issue with driving something into reverse bias if you have a very high ripple value on the output from your series regulators. So in our series arrangement, we have our two supplies. We'll call them A and B. So in A and B, we have our plus and minus terminals. And here we have the minus terminal of A connected to the plus terminal of B. And then B is of course going back to some ground. Here A comes out to some load. We have a V out value. And then we need to ensure that we have some level of isolation between these. Well, one way to do this is to actually place some diodes between these two regulators. So we'd have a diode here, and then we would have a diode here. So this is one way to ensure that we have some isolation between these two circuits. And then we would take our output voltage with respect to this ground. Now, in this arrangement, we want to ensure that the voltage drop between this node at the top of this diode and this node right here between the two diodes does not drive this diode into reverse bias. So you need to select your diode properly to ensure that its reverse breakdown voltage is large enough to accommodate the nominal V out value plus whatever ripple would be measured in between these two nodes. We'll call that ripple V sub R. Same thing over here with B. Now B can have a different output voltage than supply A. However, it also has some ripple that would normally be measured between this point, which is its positive terminal, and this point, which is its negative terminal. You also need to ensure that this diode does not get driven into reverse bias. Now, if both of these diodes are not being driven into reverse bias, 
then that's great. We have a sufficient isolation between the two supplies. But you also need to account for the ripple here. So here, if you just oversize this diode by let's say 50% or a factor two, some ridiculously high value, you're gonna be just fine. You'll protect yourself both from the V out from supply B, V out from supply A, and then the ripple between these two supplies. So next, what about the current handling of this circuit? Well, the current handling needs to be sized such that the I out maximum for supply A and the I max for supply B is going to be larger than whatever load current, I sub L, you expect to be measured between these two terminals. So remember the current loop that exists throughout this device is going to essentially go something like this. So this entire current loop also has a switch here going like this, because remember, this is a regulator. There's a switching element in here that provides rectification. And at some instant uh, during half of a PWM cycle, there's going to be current being dropped across this terminal and then flowing through here and then also has to get dropped across this terminal. So there is some IMAX handling here that needs to be larger than whatever the load current is going to be expected on the output of this regulator. Now, you've probably just noticed another issue here, which is ensuring that the sink current here is also being sunk at the same instant here in regulator B. And so that means that we then tend to need some sort of sink functionality built into these regulators, either through a reference oscillator or through sync output and inputs. Some regulators do allow syncing through a reference oscillator. That would be like a clock or a crystal. If you have that reference oscillator available, you can then ensure that within some phase limitation, you can sync the two supplies together. That way they are switching at the same instant within some tolerance. And then they're going to be able to provide this rectification across both supplies simultaneously. Now, the last point I'd like to talk about here is regulation. Remember, you have two separate supplies. The supplies are being individually regulated. And you have to ensure that the regulation is being applied such that you can hit the target voltages individually. And then through the act of regulation, you don't have one of these supplies influencing the output voltage from the other supply, because that could then create an oscillation in the mutually coupled feedback loop. So let's just suppose we're implementing voltage mode control here. If we're implementing voltage mode control, let's say for regulator B, what we would generally have is a resistor divider here. So I'd have two resistors and they would then connect back to ground. And then I would have some feedback for supply B and it would come back to a feedback pin over here on this side of the supply. So what the regulator is doing is it's measuring just the voltage between this node and this node dropped over a resistor divider and it's getting this voltage output here. What about for regulator A? Where should we reference that same measurement for regulator A? Well, in A, I think it would be intuitive to then say we should take the measurement here also to ground and then have a feedback loop starting here from this point in the resistor divider network over here to this point on supply A. The problem here is that this measurement is taken all the way to ground. So it's also regulating based on fluctuations in this output from supply B. I would argue that you actually don't want to do that. And instead, you should have the reference be here at this node. So you're only measuring the output from supply A. So if you're going to implement voltage, uh, voltage mode control in supply A, you don't want to reference it to ground. The reason is that if there were some reason for the voltage output from B to drop out a little bit, A is immediately going to change its switching duty cycle in order to increase its output voltage. So B is also going to then try and increase its output voltage within the same instant. And so you could drive A into some sort of oscillation where it's essentially increasing or decreasing its duty cycle in response to changes in B as it tries to compensate its dropout. 
So this issue is avoided if you just choose the right reference measurement for voltage mode control in this series supply. Now in the parallel case, we had the voltage from A being equal to the voltage from B. Here we have our ground connection, same thing here. We have our ground connection, and then these two connect up here at this node, and then we have our V out also measured with respect to ground. How do we apply regulation in this case? Well, there could be mon current monitoring inside these supplies, and that would provide regulation. You could also have the supplies with a fixed output voltage. In that case, they would have their own feedback loops internal to the supply. However, you could also have a case where you are measuring individually the feedback loop from this output because they basically both have the exact same output voltage, or at least they should in theory. Now, here we would have a feedback loop starting here. It would go over to A and it would go over to B. So if there's a dropout on the output voltage for some reason, or there's some sort of fault, both supplies are going to respond in the same way to this change in the output voltage through this mutually shared feedback loop. So I think this is the best way to implement feedback from these supplies. However, you could also put one of them here. So let's say the feedback loop for B starting here, and then the feedback loop for A starting here, and they could have their own resistor divider networks. So you can do it either way. Now, if you have features like zero voltage switching in these supplies, you may also need syncing to ensure that they are syncing and switching at the same instant, just like we had in the series case. This could also involve a reference oscillator, which would then exist somewhere else on the PCB and then routed to the supplies individually. So we have a little bit of ease in terms of the feedback loop design because it could be shared. However, we do need to implement syncing to ensure that these supplies are switching at the same instant and also to ensure that they're ripple are aligned in time. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Whenever you're going to use regulators in series or in parallel, make sure that they are designed for it, either through direct syncing or syncing to an external oscillator. You can always find data sheets for your components on octopart.com. And whenever you need to find CAD models for your components, of course, look in the manufacturer part search panel in Alteam Designer. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Make sure to leave comments and questions in the comments section. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.